Uh, hi, welcome to part three of the this drone project. In part one, we designed it. In part two, we built the frame. Now it's time to put it all together. In this video, I'll show you how I assembled the full drone, motors, wires, battery, BMS, and power on. Everything is fast forwarded, but I'll explain what I was thinking during each step. Let's begin. Now we're starting with one of the most important parts, the motors and ESCs. Each motor must be mounted with perfect alignment because even a slight uh, angle difference can cause thrust, asymmetry and control instability. I uh, carefully align each mount using a digital angle gauge and tighten with thread locker and the torque calibration. The ESCs are mounted as close to the motors as possible. Less wire equals less resistance, less weight and less heat loss. Cooling is also critical um, so they're mounted in direct airflow zones. Signal and power lines are completely separated. I've had EMI issues before, not again. Every wire is braided, secured, service looped and double checked. I treat each arm as its own sub assembly. If I need to service this uh, drone on site, each arm should be individually removable and testable. Fast motion makes this look uh, easy, but uh, honestly, each motor took me 30 to 45 minutes. You don't see the mistakes here mounting holes off by two millimeters, bolt stripped, ESC connectors reversed. That's what happened the first time I ever built one of these. So now I move slower, think ahead and test every step before locking it in. Uh, this battery is big and heavy. I use a jack to lift it, just like in an electric vehicle. Lifting it by hand isn't safe. Um, the jack lets me raise it slowly and hold it steady while I align the mounting points. The battery slides into a reinforced cradle under the frame. The locking point has to match perfectly. If it's off by even a few millimeters, the whole fit becomes unstable. After positioning, I secure it with mechanical locks. This prevents any shifting during flight or landing. Then I connect the XT150 terminals. These are industrial grade connectors rated for over 200 amps. I make sure the polarity is correct and press until I hear the locking click. If it doesn't lock properly, it could spark or uh, disconnect in the air. I've seen what happens when uh, high voltage connections are loose, burnt insulation, melted pins, total power failure. That's not happening here. Once it's fully connected, I check insulation, cable tension, and clearance from the frame. Then I mark it as secure. This step may look quick, but in real time, I spent about 40 minutes triple checking everything before even thinking about power. The battery is the heart of the system and I don't take any risks with the heart. Wires may look simple but this is one of the hardest parts. Power lines go one way, signal lines go another. They must not cross or touch. I use cable covers, zip ties, and clips to hold everything. No shaking, no friction. I also label every wire. 
later when I need to fix something it will save me hours the BMS line is wrapped in shielded cable can and UART wires are twisted each connector is tested by pooling if it disconnects too easily I replace it after wiring I double check everything again tired eyes miss mistakes Uh, now it's time to power up. This part is always stressful. I flip the master switch. ESC start to beep one by one. Then I open the serial monitor. BMS shows all cells are normal. Voltages match. Temperatures stable. Everything is working. That's a big relief. I don't show the inside of the battery, but this moment means the system is alive. Now, now that everything works, I begin the final assembly. First, I go back and check all four arms. I torque down uh, every main bolt again. I want to make sure nothing has loosened during wiring or movement. Then I attach the top plate. This holds the structure together, distributes forces across the frame, and protects the wiring inside. I secure the landing gear, spacing each leg evenly. It needs to be stable on uneven ground, especially for field takeoffs. Next, I go over the drone top to bottom. I'm not looking for uh, major problems. I'm looking for uh, little things. A connector half plugged in. A zip tie too tight. A small nick in uh, the insulation. I find and fix them now, not later. Because once this drone flies, everything vibrates. Everything moves. Any flow will grow fast. Even now I I'm thinking about future repairs. Can I reach this wire if I have to fix it on site? Can I take off a cover plate in the field with only two tools? That thinking changes how you build. Once I'm happy with the checks, I clean the work area. Um, zip tie ends, packaging, tools. The drone should be the only thing left on the table. Now it stands on its own, fully assembled, fully functional. This is no longer an idea, it's real. The, this drone is ready. It's not just a frame anymore. It's taken weeks of work, hundreds of components, and more mistakes than I can count, but now it's complete. As I stand here looking at it, I don't just see aluminum and carbon. I see decisions, lessons, and time. Every wire, every bolt, every adjustment, it uh, all tells a story of building something from scratch and what comes next is the hardest part flight i'll be honest the first flight didn't go well in fact the first few didn't but that's the truth of uh, building real things you learn adjust and keep moving part four will show the entire process of flight testing from liftoff to failure to recovery i hope you'll join me for that too. Thanks for watching. See you in part four.